Alaska is America's final frontier, spectacularly beautiful, bitterly cold. It's 25 degrees below zero at 10 in the morning. The sun's coming up, but it's more like the dawn of time than the dawn of day. One by one, two by two, the eagles are landing. They gather here at the same time every morning from December to April. There are more bald eagles in Alaska than the other 49 states combined. 50,000 in all, the proud symbol of a powerful nation. They are magnificent, and the way they look at you is a little intimidating. The United States is an incredibly patriotic place, and you'd think the national symbol would be treated with respect, perhaps even reverence. But here, some people see the eagles as pests, and there's a bit of battle. On one side, the town's most famous resident. On the other, many of the other inhabitants. And the stakes are high. For the eagles, for the local economy, for the very notion of ecotourism, which some people believe is a contradiction in terms. Right at the end of the road, on the edge of Alaska, is a tiny town called Homer. It's rugged and remote, five hours from Anchorage. driving into the center of a storm. I received an awful lot of nasty letters and nasty phone calls about this. I've been and down I've been there and you can just see the bird excrement from all these birds that are there. There and, are a few and, people uh, in Homer that, that seem to want to uh, vilify eagles. They like to refer to them as top predators or carnivores, as if there's something that we should be afraid of. I've come here to meet Jean Keane, the eagle lady. She's 82 years old. Every morning of every winter, Jean feeds the eagles in her front garden. She's been doing it for a quarter of a century. It is a labor of love. I enjoy all my life. And I hate to say anything, go hungry. I have gone hungry, but, and I know what it's like. And um, it, it, I hate to say anything, go to waste. There's always something that'll eat it or utilize it. So that's, and I can't lay in a nice warm bed and see a bunch of real hungry birds outside. That, that would kill me, you know. <laughs> Sometimes she feeds when the wind chill is minus 40. It's not that bad today, but there's still snow on the sand and ice in the ocean. It doesn't worry the eager eagles. As they wait for Jean, some stand patiently. Others jostle and joust for a front row seat. <laughs> Then breakfast is served. It's a decent menu. Salmon, halibut, herring. Bald eagles are predators, the top of their food chain. But in the lean winter months, they're only too happy for a handout. Their reflexes are as sharp as their talons. Jean King's breakfast buffet began with just two birds and a bucket of fish heads. Word travelled quickly. Before long, scores of eagles were turning up. Now there are hundreds. Did you ever imagine it could evolve no. quite as big as this? Not in my wildest dreams. Or that I would still be doing it at 82 years old. <laughs> the eagle lady lives alone in a tiny trailer. It's covered in eagles, outside and in. Mementos from an extraordinary life. This is where I died. The mane and tail red on the horse. Why did you do that? To have it match my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Your mane matched the horse. I, I saw a girl that did that before. Back in the 50s, Jean was a professional rodeo rider, hanging out with stars like Jean Autry and performing stunts on horseback. And that's doing one of the tricks when I was trick riding. This is called a hippodrome stand. 
And this is a death drag. This is what I was doing when I got hurt. A split second changed to life. The cowgirl slipped out of the saddle. My head hit the wall and I knocked me out and put me down on the ground. My back leg got between his two back legs. She was dragged around the arena, smashing her leg. Unable to ride, Jean King began a new career, hauling cattle in an 18-wheel truck. Now she feeds eagles, a job nearly as challenging. But basically, you just have a lot of respect for them. I sometimes I would scold them, you know, <laughs> get like a bunch of kids. But anyway, yeah, I say they're quite the group and they're, they're a lot of fun to be around, but they, uh, you have to be careful. But Jean Keane's a tough old bird. She last missed a feed a decade ago when she underwent a mastectomy. It's not just hungry birds that flock to her garden. There are dozens of photographers hungry for a perfect picture. It's estimated 80% of the world's bald eagle photos are taken in Homer. You know, tears were just coming down my face because the first time you see this, it's just something you feel, and you can't go home and explain it to somebody. You have to feel it, experience it, I think. Well, I'm 79 now, and I plan to come back every year as long as I'm able. It's that special. I just can't describe it. It's indescribable. <laughs> Bald eagles are the only eagles native to North America. They mate for life. The birds soar for hours, thousands of metres above the earth. It's not hard to see why they're the national symbol. Across the country, eagles grace seals, stamps, coins and monuments. In Homer, though, they're also on cars, lampposts and buildings. This is the place where eagles dare, to do whatever they like. It's like something from a Hitchcock movie. The birds have taken over the town and the locals are nervous. At the pub, everyone seems to have an eagle tale to tell, mostly about missing pets. Around here, bite-sized dogs and cats are known as eagle bait. Oh, there's this one lady that was walking this little Pomeranian about that big and just come down and snatched it right off the dock. The way it went. Took her dog. Took her dog. And how did the lady handle that? Oh, she freaked out. Just totally freaked out. Just couldn't handle it. <laughs> and her husband just standing there with his mouth open. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he went and flew up on top of that church steeple and ate it. <laughs> But disappearing pets are only part of the problem. Edgar Bailey has a bird's eye view of Homer. He tried to start a nature reserve up here, but says marauding eagles attack the wildlife. Really heart-wrenching events where an eagle came swooping down and got a crane before it got off the ground, or barely got off the ground and nailed it. Basically wiped out everything we worked for. The retired biologist says Homer's winter eagle population has increased dramatically since Jean started feeding and that it's threatening the entire ecosystem. Their distribution abundance totally altered and their behaviour completely changed into uh, an outdoor zoo circus type atmosphere. And uh, I, I think it's a, a whole a perverted scenario. She's basically well-intentioned, or certainly was. I, you know, I'm sure she did this out of the goodness of her heart, but ecologically, she's totally unaware. It's just a, a real potential disaster. He's drawn up a well-researched and well-rehearsed list of potential problems. By inviting the eagles into an urban area, there's a risk of disease. They could attack a child or hit a power pole. I mean, it's gruesome to see our national bird rendered to a contorted, twisted thing like that after... I don't know how many thousand volts went through it. Or one could strike an aeroplane, as happened in Idaho. Uh, here's, here's the remains of the eagle on the bottom of the cockpit. You can imagine if it hit up there, what would have happened? Hi! How are you? For some Alaskans, it's all too much. Despite incredibly strict laws, eagles like this one are being shot. Some people just, you know, become vigilantes and they've said, I've lost my, my Jack Russell Terrier, you know, I've lost my chickens, I've lost my ducks, my kids' rabbits. And I asked one guy point blank, I said, how do you handle it? He says, well, I solved the problem with a 22. You're not helping. Oh, you're being so funny, aren't Come you? On. 
The injured eagle's beak will never grow back, so it'll spend the rest of its life in captivity. Every two weeks it has an inelegant pedicure. The talons are the size of a human hand and much more powerful. Can I have this toe, please? She's just so bloody strong. She's incredibly strong. The bird treatment centre sees a lot of eagles that have been shot. Eagles are messy. Their feces smells bad. There's lots of it. People get frustrated. It makes me very angry and upset uh, to think that somebody felt like that was the solution. Whatever motivated them to do it. Uh, I think that's a sad statement for the, the person. And they, they have to live with the vision of what they did. There's a movement to clip the eagle lady's wings to make the feeding illegal. That's what Lee Mayhem wants, and she's busy gathering evidence. Sometimes it's just really painful for me to watch it. I can't describe it. Sometimes I just have to stop and go home. I just like, I get to the point watching that that I've had about enough. <laughs> From this perspective, the eagles do resemble predatory pigeons, or perhaps giant seagulls fighting over a chip. Lee Mahan says it's degrading and dangerous. Scrapping and fighting like junkyard eagles. There's no difference in baiting pit bulls or baiting bears. By the time last March, we had at least 12 we were watching, and they had limbs missing, uh, broken shoulders, broken uh, missing eyes, and we know that they do this to themselves. As Lee's home video shows, the eagle lady has spawned an eagle feeding industry. Tour companies are charging thousands of dollars for photo safaris and then using fish to attract the birds. The images end up in books and posters, but no one ever admits the eagles were baited. I often thought that we should take the baiters and put them behind a big fence and not feed them for three or four days and then maybe throw them, throw them you know, frozen fish sticks or something and see how they like it and get to fight over it. And yet the photographers are a lifeline for the local economy. If the feeding was banned, Homer would become a wintertime ghost town. Thank you. Thank you. Shops like this rely on the eagle trade. It sells everything a tourist could need in Alaska. And what would you use that for? Uh, bear protection. Bear protection? Bear protection. The bear essentials. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what? And would that actually stop a bear? Yes, it will. Yeah, something like, I mean, you look at the size of, of that. Yes, it will stop it. Mainly, though, the photographers buy bait, boots and warm clothes. Thousands of dollars worth. Jean, I would say in our store alone, she probably easily, uh, the customers, spend a good 75000 The Eagle Lady doesn't believe she's doing anything wrong. She's determined to keep going as long as possible, despite the fight. That's very upsetting to me. It, to me, it turned my stomach upside down, but uh, I can't do anything about it. It's, you know, it's, it's happening, so I just, just go with it and see what happens. Today, she's picking up a truckload of scraps from the fish factory. The birds eat hundreds of kilos a day. There's some carcasses, mostly fish. Okay. Salmon. Is, is salmon great. Well, I'd usually cut them the cod. Oh, I'll take the cod and the squid they will eat too. Okay. Jean will serve up any meat she can get her hands on, even seal, bear and moose. I've gone and gotten them and brought them back and skinned them and then butchered them up for the, for the eagles. One year we had six moose starved to death out here. A friend helps with the storing and thawing. Over the years, Jean spent more money feeding the eagles than feeding herself. At least $20,000, half a retirement fund. How quickly do the eagles go through a box that, that then size? They can go through that in less than a week. Executive Director Christy, would you uh, introduce yourself to your staff, please? Good morning, Mr Chairman. Yes, I'm Christy Tibbles, Executive Director for the Board of Game and the staff we have with us. Eagle feeding is being bitterly debated at a state and local level. Please ban the intentional feeding of bald eagles. On one side, the townsfolk who aren't keen on Jean and want to shut her down. The greatest resource that Alaskans have is its uniqueness, is a place where wild means wild. On the other, the businesses that rely on tourism. 
I would ask the people of those who have recommended these proposals to ban eagles, have they seen those marvelous birds come in? Have they seen people's reactions? Have they seen the sense of awe and wonder on their faces? They see them. The eagle lady herself has maintained a dignified silence. I don't have a lot of political pull or a lot of money, so I can't. I can only fight it to a certain point. The ultimate ruling is a victory for both sides. Eagle baiting is now banned in Homer, but there's an exception for Jean Keane. She can keep feeding her friends until 2010. I think that's Lloyd and Mabel. It's a pair that are they're not a nesting pair, but they stay together all year round. They'll make love down on the beach, but they don't go and lay eggs. <laughs> There's no doubt she loves the eagles, but she may be loving them to death, and raising all sorts of questions about how humans interact with nature and the costs of a priceless experience.